Today I'm planning to discuss with you about image sensors. These detectors that are normally inside a digital camera. Discuss with you about uh, different technologies for these sensors. Um, noise performance, uh, about different kinds of circuit technology and architecture solutions for the detectors. So the outline of my talk will start from what's inside a camera, uh, what kind of components will you find inside a camera. The image sensors of course and the uh, charge couple devices and the uh, CMOS detectors. Uh, we will discuss about noise uh, and we will discuss about the micro lenses that can be used to improve the, the ratio be between noise and signal. Um, fill factor is an important parameter in, in this uh, area. We will discuss uh, readout modes, uh, how to read out the pixels from the sensor and the consequences from different schemes of reading out the pixels. So what we can find inside the camera then? The normal component of course is a optical component, a lens that is focusing the light that is projected onto the surface of the image detector. And the image detector also needs some kind of external driving hardware normally to set out the, the uh, modes for exposure and reading out and so on so on and driving uh, these detector interfaces and deliver pixels to uh, the communication interface that will deliver uh, sequentially the pixels out to um, some kind of external device using uh, an analog interface or it could be a, a serial uh, USB interface, Ethernet, camera link, firewire and so on so on. Uh, but we will focus today on the discussion of the image sensors. The purpose of the camera is, as I said, to capture the light that is projected onto the image plane, uh, the sensor surface. And there exist two major technologies for these image sensors, the CMOS and the CCD sensors. And these acronyms CMOS, CMOS means Complementary Metal Oxide Semiconductor. Uh, CCD uh, means Charge Couple Devices. I will also explain this technology. Uh, both technologies are used within different architectural solutions. Uh, different ways of arranging the uh, pixels and the readout mechanism on the detector surface. Charge couple devices is based on the structure of a silicon area and using a silicon material that is doped. Uh, I hope you have a little bit of knowledge about uh, semiconductor technology. Uh, and uh, this material is then used firstly to accumulate the charges that are generated from incoming photons. And this incoming, the energy from the incoming photons is generating a pair of charges, one hole and one electron. Uh, and this is uh, accumulated uh, under the surface of the uh, insulator, the insulated material. That you can see here and you have three metal electrodes and the thing is that when you are uh, putting a voltage on top of these metal electrodes you, there is a, a capacitance uh, with the uh, semiconductor, semiconductor material and the uh, free charges the electrons in this case they are attracted to the surface of the semiconductor material close to the insulating material and then you will also create a, uh, an, an area, a depletion area under this metal electrode that is free of, uh, it is ionized, you know, free of, of charges, free charges. So whenever there is a, a photon coming into this area, uh, this photon will then generate with a certain probability uh, a pair of uh, electrons and hole. Uh, yeah, that is the a very short course in, in semiconductor technology. Uh, and this is what can happen, you know, when you have a stable voltage on top of one of the electrodes. 
but then you are using three electrodes and there is a readout mechanism where you uh, uh, in a sequence apply a sequence of pulses that generates voltages on these three phases so let's say that we start with this uh, uh, status where we have accumulated a number of charges due to incoming photons and then we apply uh, a voltage uh, on top of the next electrode, the adjacent electrode. You can see the corresponding uh, pulse diagram of the three phases here and you have a timeline here that goes in this direction here. So now when we apply the voltage on also the uh, adjacent electrode we create a common depletion area so that the three uh, electrons they are smeared out on under both of the electrodes. And in the next step, we are going to release uh, the voltage over the first electrode like this, which means that we have actually been able to create a motion, you know, uh, in this uh, horizontal direction of the detector. We can continue and uh, we apply a voltage on the third phase. We make a smearing and distribute the charges under the surface of both electrodes and then we continue with releasing the voltage over the second electrode uh, and we have been able then to uh, move the charges that was, was accumulated under the surface of, of electrode f uh, number one uh, to the position of being held under the electrode number three and this is the basic mechanism of uh, the sensitive area of a, a, a charge coupled device uh, image sensor. Uh, and then of course you can you can connect several of these uh, pixels in a series to create a, a long uh, transport of charges from one side of the detector to, to the other side of the detector where you can have a readout circuitry to uh, convert the uh, amount of charges into voltage over an, an output uh, capacitance and an output uh, uh, analog amplifier. This picture here shows the architecture of a linear CCD, which means that we have a, a vector of uh, photosensitive areas, photodiodes, that are generating current charges that flows into uh, the shift, analog shift register, the CCD. And by using these phases that I showed you before on, on the, the fundamental uh, mechanism on the silicon surface, we are able to, sh to shift the charges towards the end of the detector that has an output, uh, output capacitance and an output amplifier that will generate an analog output video signal. Uh, but this detector then only have like one row of pixels so if we want to have an array pixel array we need to expand this architecture we will need to expand it into a full frame CCD where we have a set of rows that corresponds to the previous linear CCD each one of them and at the same time we will add an additional set of faces that can be used to shift charges vertically down to the output analog shift register and the analog shift register uh, uh, is having another set of uh, shift uh, faces that will transport the charges into the area into the corner of the, the detector where we have the output capacitance and the output amplifier uh, we can uh, also conclude that uh, the pixels they will be uh, exposed to photons to exposed to light also during readout and this can uh, cause a smearing problem due to the motion created by the, the, the transfer of the charges so this is a drawback uh, it can be solved by using a mechanical shutter uh, or we can use strobe light um, strobe light means that we have a flashlight that has a very short duration but high intensity during the time when we are not do doing the, the uh, uh, readout of the detector only during exposure uh, 
this kind of architecture will have a close to very close to 100% fill factor and fill factor is defined as the ratio between the, the total area of the detector and the, the amount of area of the, the detector that is actually photosensitive, sensitive to incoming photons. And this high ratio of photosensitive area means that we can also get a high signal to noise ratio. A good ra uh, ratio between the amount of noise in the signal and the amount of signal. We can, uh, in order to uh, reduce the impact of uh, smearing during readout, we can double the size, double the area of the de detector by having one uh, part of the area that is sensitive to the incoming light and we have another area that is shielded from light and we can apply a quick transfer of the pixels from the photosensitive area into the shielded area and then continue the transfer from, from the shielded area uh, during the time it takes to also make the, the serial readout of, of every uh, row out to the output amplifier and performing the A to D conversion and so on. Smearing is significant, significantly reduced by a very quick transfer, less than 500 mic microseconds of the charges from the photosensitive area down to this uh, light shielded area. And we will still have a close to 100% fill factor since uh, the photosensitive area is the same as the full frame transfer, full frame CCD. Uh, uh, but then of course the cost for this kind of device will be very high since we also have uh, doubled the area of the detector. So this is a drawback of course with this kind of CCD architecture. Another way of uh, trying to beat the problem of smearing at readout is the architecture of interline transfer CCD. And here we have added a light shielded vertical register for every column like this. And then uh, simultaneously at the same time and very quickly during a time less than one microsecond, we will have a transfer of charges from the photodiodes uh, un un to, in, into this um, light shielded vertical registers and simultaneously. And then the charges can be uh, safely under this light shield uh, vertically transferred down to the output analog uh, shift register. Uh, but then we have added also a kind of an architecture overhead, an additional mechanism in order to handle the readout of the pixels that would consume a small amount or at least an, an amount of the photosensitive area. Uh, and it, you will reduce that way reduce the fill factor and reduce the signal to noise ratio from this uh, detector uh, but the, this uh, vertical register they can also be used to collect uh, overexposed pixels uh, charge from overexposed pixels uh, fighting the phenomenon of phenom phenomenon of blooming and blooming means that the charges from overexposed pixels are bleeding from uh, one pixel to the neighboring pixel. And this uh, kind of behavior can be so severe such that the charges are, are bleeding and, and disabling a complete column from the, the top to the bottom. Uh, but by collecting these, the charges from the overexposed pixels, we can avoid this blooming phenom phenomenon. Uh, the the drains can also be uh, they can also be used to uh, uh, control the exposure of the pixels to create a reset of the pixels a simultaneous global reset of all the pixels in this detector area. CMOS sensors, on the other hand, they are using a, a circuit technology that very much is similar to the ones used for for uh, uh, microprocessors, mem memories and other digital circuitry. And of course this is an advantage 
in terms of uh, cost for production if you can use the same fabrication facilities and the same fabrication processes as for for memories and 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 and, and uh, microprocessors uh, we see here on this picture uh, the architecture of of uh, a pixel and it is consisting of uh, of pmos and nmos transistor in the same way as other kinds of digital CMOS circuitry. Uh, it is very much similar to a memory cell in uh, RAM memory uh, and we have a, a line for column output and we have a, a line for addressing. Uh, we have a control of reset of the accumulating capacitance and we have a transistor for control of uh, integrating current into the uh, <coughs> the collecting charges for the uh, input capacitance the same capacitance that is controlling this uh, MOS uh, transistor uh, the photosensitive diode is uh, generating current from uh, incoming light and this current unless the reset transistor is activated can flow through this transistor assuming that the sample is activated into this capacitance that is controlling the current through this MOS transistor and you have a control signal here for selecting the row connecting the output of this pixel cell Onto, uh, onto the column output wire that is common for all the rows but then you select the these rows uh, one by one <coughs> so well, you can say that this kind of pixel cell is very much similar to a ROM cell in a RAM memory and you have a similar kind of addressing mechanism where you have a, a as you can see here a vertical addressing uh, giving this row select signals output for each one of the rows um, and uh, whenever you have selected one row you will get from that row you will get the output onto a, a parallel set of column output wires um, and for each column you will have amplifiers uh, analog amplifiers and analog multiplexers that will connect it sequentially by the horizontal addressing uh, addressing uh, each one of the pixels in one row out to the output analog amplifier and the A to, to D conversion uh, and the sequencer can be implemented on the same chip since we are using CMOS technology that can also implement other kinds of digital circuitry uh, pixels can then be addressed uh, and read out column and row wise by, by row wise and column wise addressing in a similar way as to ROM which means that we can selectively pick out very easily and perform uh, a cropping of the image and we can also balance the, the, the spatial resolution for the temporal resolution at readout um, so this is a, 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 a a big advantage. On the other hand we have created also a big architecture overhead that will create low fill factor and will result in a lot of noise and lower signal to noise ratio. At the same time the, the uh, on-ship implemented digital circuitry will generate more of digital noise that will add on to the noise figure of the CMOS sensor. Um, you will need some kind of shutter in your camera to control the, the time, the start and top stop of the time when you allow light to come through the lens and end up on the image detector surface to contribute to the actual exposure. And this can be controlled by some kind of electromechanical uh, shutter, some device that can be controlled electromechanically to open and close at the exact start and, and stop of the exposure. But you can also create a shutter electronically uh, directly by electronic circuits on to the detector uh, circuitry detector architecture and the purpose of this electronic shutter then is to control the start and stop of the exposure 
and I think we can start to have a look at the the um, architecture for the uh, pixel of a CMOS detector that more or less like look like a, a ROM cell and we can control the start and stop of the exposure by using the reset and sample signal you can see that you have the output the main output transistor and you have a transistor for reset and you have a transistor for sample if both the transistor for sample and reset are activated it means that the current is flowing and you are emptying, e emptying the uh, charges that are stored in the capacitance controlling the output um, transistor so that is a way of resetting the pixel and on the other way if you are deactivating the reset transistor but you are activating the sample transistor you allow uh, current to flow from the uh, photosensitive diode into the uh, uh, capacitance that is controlling the output transistor so enabling the sample is a way of ena of controlling the duration of the exposure uh, and then if you can control the sample and reset signals at the same time for all the pixels on on the detector surface it means that you have a global reset and you have a, a global uh, control of the start and stop of exposure a global shutter on other kinds of detectors uh, you are able to control the start and stop of the exposure sequentially interleaved with the readout of the pixels but the drawback with this is that you at the same time you, you will not expose expose the pixels at the same time on uh, the whole pixel area which will create uh, artifacts on uh, objects that are exposed to motion this can be seen on these pictures showing my door into the office which I have been quickly moving in the in the horizontal direction like this <clears throat> and you see for the electronic rolling shutter we are adding a, a distortion to the geometric shape of the door that is moving uh, if you compare to the global shutter we are preserving the shape of the object here so you can see that it is important to to uh, make a choice which kind of detector you are actually uh, using in your machine vision system an image sensor uh, is not only capturing and generating uh, the signal that we are interested in it is also generating noise generating noise due to the fact that uh, light is quantified into a number of photons and also due to the fact that uh, you have uh, a lot of uh, circuitry on the CMOS uh, sensors like the control of, of readout uh, amplifiers and also uh, the A to D converters that is that are generating noise on the ship itself adds to the noise figure and yeah we have noise on the sensors and we can we can uh, we can separate different kinds of noise into two major classes the first one is temporal noise which includes uh, the photon noise I think photon noise can also be referred to as uh, uh, quantum noise since the energy is quantified into a number of photons and background noise the background noise is further divided into thermal noise and shot noise thermal noise is due to the fact that we have thermal energy and a t certain temperature on the detector material and this uh, temperature is generating uh, electron hole pairs that contribute to the uh, to the signal that you are, you are capturing in, in, in or the noise that you are capturing in each one of the, the pixels shot noise is uh, due to the fact that current is quantified also quantified into a uh, number of uh, charges number of electrons shot noise takes place mainly in the amplifiers spatial noise uh, on the other hand uh, is uh, a kind of a, a pattern noise that is due to manufacturing processes it is uh, sensitivity variations 
and variations in the dark signal for each one of the pixels distributed on the detector area. And uh, typical for the, the uh, spatial noise is then that it is related to the manufacturing process pattern noise and it is possible also to add a, a, a correction matrix where you can make compensation calibration for the dark signal as well as calibration for the difference in sensitivity for each one of the pixels. The temporal noise on the other hand uh, it can be reduced by calculation of mean value if you think that you take a number of uh, images in a sequence on a static uh, scene then in the temporal dimension for each one of the pixels you can make a mean value calculation and that way reducing the noise. If this is possible then it is characteristic for the temporal noise. Uh, what more can be said about noise is that we can compare the noise performance between the two major uh, detector technology CCD and CMOS <clears throat> and to make this comparison fairly uh, yeah, to make it fair we need to have a comparison using the same pixel size um, and you see here for uh, for the CMOS uh, sensor uh, we have in the uh, horizontal dimension the exposure uh, uh, the light intensity times uh, the uh, exposure time and on the vertical axis we have the, the relation between the signal and the noise, the signal to noise ratio expressed in decibel. And the blue line here corresponds to the CMOS detector, the green line corresponds to the CCD detector. And there can be differences between the range of uh, 10 to 20 decibel depending on the exposure. Uh, the use of micro lenses is a way of adding uh, a small optical component, small lenses on top of each pixel on the pixel surface to collect more light and to expand, to extend the, the fill factor of the, the detector, to increase this, the active area, photo active area of the detector. And you see here on the picture that uh, the active area on the pixel is. Uh, limited and there is an additional area that is occupied by the uh, overhead architecture for readout and but then it is possible to increase uh, the area that is actually sensitive to light by adding a small uh, lens focusing lens that takes more light to focus onto a small narrow area uh, to increase the fill factor and these micro lenses they can be added as a matrix on top of both uh, CCD sensors and CMOS sensors. There exist different uh, schemes, different ways and sequences for, for reading out the pixels from the detector surface. And one that is uh, well known is this interlaced scan readout and the benefit from this interlay scan is that we can reduce the flicker, the uh, perceived flicker by human vision on uh, looking at a, a video monitor. Uh, because the, the field frequency will be twice as the frame frequency and these odd and even fields they are also then exposed one at a time. Uh, this is an, an inheritance from the old TV technology where we were using field frequencies of 50 Hertz here in Europe while the, the frame or the image fr frequency was 25 images per, per second. But showing only 25 images per second would cause quite severe flickering to the human vision. So that's why we increase virtually the, the update by, by sending the fields, uh, half fields uh, with a higher frequency. Uh, However, this kind of uh, scheme for readout will also lead to artifacts for the moving objects that will look like a, a, a comb here on, on the edges for the moving objects. This image here then again shows the picture of my door to the office that is moving in the horizontal direction. The other way of reading out uh, the detectors uh, can be this called progressive scan which means that you are reading out the pixels row by row uh, without separating them 
as in delay scan for the odd field and to the even field. Yeah, as a summary from this lecture, I think we can conclude that it is very beneficial to have a lot of knowledge about image detectors and their characteristic features for you uh, to understand how to select an image sensor for your machine vision application.